subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on our updates and get notified about our new videos. I was giving the example, you know, your ad has reached to one lakh audience out of that, uh, maybe 20 or 30 actually clicked and uh, they have come to your website and uh, there's an offer running on your website and you see that only two people have taken this offer. So one lakh to 30 to two. Now the job, just to put it very simply of a conversion rate optimizer that from that one lakh, can I make it hundred people visiting my site? And from that hundred, can I make 10 people who are buying my product or taking my offer. This is done by a lot of uh, strategic and a lot of tactical things. You know, for instance, I might want to change the messaging of the website. I might want to change the image of the product or the image of an ambassador on the website. I might want to change the lines which I put in terms of the Facebook ads. I might want to change that there are certain targeting options that I have in Facebook ads. So there's a myriad of options and uh, basically this conversion rate optimizer guy, what it does is it creates certain hypothesis. It says this kind of messaging to this kind of a target audience will give this kind of a result. If it doesn't get it, it's tries to improve. So this is, there are a lot of science, a lot of data, a lot of experiments which happens. And this is one of the, I'll say a uh, very fast growing um, uh, career path in the West. Uh, unfortunately, in India, it is still not even a baby. So let me go back to the question answer session. Okay, no more questions. So I'll get into the next one. Okay, so we start off with uh, ACO. Um, again, to repeat, ACO is something which is organic. So if you search for, let's say, restaurants near me, or if you search for the best Bluetooth headphone, then there are certain results which comes without the ad. These are organic results. Now, this organic results can be, I mean, I'll put it under the quote, it can be manipulated. I'm not saying that it can be really manipulated, but it, you know, a, a search engine like Google can be given certain signals where, you know, they will say that, you know, a person like Tuhin searching from Bangalore, who is looking for the best Bluetooth headset might like this. So they're picking up some signals from a particular website in form of the content, which is there in form of other people who are visiting from that particular city. And then they will display this particular result in front of me. So there's a lot of work which goes on in terms of uh, the search ranking, whether it is first page or, uh, I mean, we are only concerned about first page. How many of you actually go to the second page and search for something? Uh, some bit of coding work. In fact, uh, this is probably one of the uh, areas where you have to learn the basic coding, right? Uh, then a lot of content work, as I said, you know, the content from the other vertical actually meshes with the content here. You have to have content, whether, you know, uh, it is like a title or it is like a small snippet which comes uh, on the, you know, the Google search or even the content of the page. And there's a lot of link building which happens, which means, you know, uh, let's say if you're an authority in, um, digital marketing, right? Uh, and then a lot of people link to you. Then uh, it kind of gives a signal to the search engine like Google saying that, okay, digital marketing, Tohin. Or, you know, somebody, uh, uh, if you are uh, good in a particular area, like for instance, if you're good in uh, uh, yoga, right? And uh, you are searching for a yoga expert. Now, uh, uh, then Google will try to see that how, you know, this particular keyword can be linked to a particular page, uh, which is by a yoga instructor. So a lot of link building also happens, uh, which are, uh, which is getting more difficult nowadays. 
And of course, the analytics part where you need to see that how many people are coming from different links, how many people are coming to the sites, how they're engaging, what are the number of pages they are visiting, what is the time they're visiting. So a lot of things on analytics that you know, an SEO expert has to do. Typically, you know, the roles, uh, there's the executive role, there's a manager role, there may be team lead, there's a, uh, you know, it can be like an agency, uh, SEO agency where the team lead manages a particular vertical or a particular set of clients. Uh, the other opportunities I have seen people move from an SEO role are a total campaign management role where you do SEO, you do PPC, you do social media campaigns. And uh, a lot of times, you know, uh, because SEO, a small part of SEO is also into social media. So you might also uh, try to shift to a social media kind of a role. So this is, as I said, the screenshots taken day before yesterday, as I see that uh, uh, in Nokri, there are some 11,000 jobs which are listed under SEO category. In uh, LinkedIn, there's some 5,000 jobs which are listed. Um, this is of course a mix of a lot of things because what typically happens is uh, the uh, lot of people will give a uh, job posting in a Nokri or a LinkedIn where they, they will use certain keywords. So even a digital marketer uh, will have SEO as one of the keywords. But this is just to kind of indicate the kind of opportunity that is there uh, if you are an SEO um, manager or, or want to become an SEO executive. Uh, this is a, a salary uh, which I have a screenshot which I have picked up from the glass door. Again, this is very, very indicative. You will see that there are some... Uh, <clears throat> decent salaries on the top uh, uh, and uh, also at the entry level uh, the salaries can uh, be much lower than this which is uh, maybe around uh, two lakhs or two and a half lakhs uh, uh, see one of the things uh, in SEO that i look for uh, when i recruit for uh, my projects or for my client is uh, what they have proved in terms of how they have ranked a particular site, how much, how many days or months, it cannot be done in days, how many months uh, they have taken uh, to get certain keywords right there in the first page of Google and more important, how they have done it. Because there are a lot of ways uh, which uh, we term as a black hat SEO with which we can full uh, search in like Google for a few months then the algorithm updates really catch up and they penalize your site. So I also, uh, when I do the interview, I also see that uh, whether this guy is using uh, a more long-term kind of an approach via vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, kind of a black hat technique. Okay, no more questions. So I go to the next section. So I come to the PPC, paper, click or campaign manager. Uh, so this is a team or this is a person who does search engine ads, uh, display ads. So display ads are displayed across. So if you go to, let's say, timesofindia.com or any other uh, uh, publishing site, you will see that there's small banners which are getting displayed at the, uh, you know, probably in the bottom of the page or in the right hand side of the page. So uh, there is a way that we can target this page. Uh, this can also be done through Google. Uh, there's something called Google Display Network. So almost 80%, I think it's 90% plus uh, websites in the world are under this particular display network, uh, where uh, through the Google's AdWord platform, we can compete for a particular place on a particular page. Uh, in form of inventory. Uh, then, of course, I have explained what social ads are. So you see most of it in Facebook. There is also ads in Twitter. There is also ads in LinkedIn. So uh, and uh, uh, the one of the main KRAs of this particular person is uh, how to get the best possible targeting because we are doing a lot of uh, hypothesis. We might say that you know, uh, let's say if I want to. Uh, target selling my phone, right? And uh, I might say that uh, I want to target people who are in interested in mobile, who are interested in apps, who are interested in some other things which are related to the phone. 
and hence I target those kind of publishers or those kind of interest. Uh, so what we essentially do is we go with this hypothesis and see that we probably classify into two, three targets uh, and we see that which, of, which one of them is working better. And then we put more money in the targeting option, which is working better. So that is also something called optimization. We try to optimize. So let's say if you have 10,000 rupees to spend, you first put 2,000 rupees and then start seeing that which one is giving more result and put the rest of 8,000 into those kind of results. It's actually not so simple as I, as I sound it. If it was so simple, um, uh, we didn't have uh, this kind of a discussion today. And it is very much return on investment driven. That is the ROI. So if I spend 10,000 rupees, what do I get? Do I get a reach? Do I get some kind of a lead? Do I get some kind of a sales? So for instance, I am right currently doing some social media campaign for a real estate developer and they have given a particular budget and I have to give them X number of leads and that to good quality of leads, which their salespeople can actually close it. Now the typical roles are the executive manager ad ops. This is the advertisement operations. Uh, a lot of companies, including very big companies like uh, Cognizant and Accenture, they have uh, huge backend operations where uh, they uh, kind of support companies like Google and they run certain ads. So there's a very standardized kind of a process. Uh, it's just more like a process outsourcing, uh, uh, a bit less in terms of online marketing, but a lot of marketing concepts and optimization which happens. You can also become a team lead. Uh, of this particular set of people who, so you might be a team lead for, uh, let's say a set of three people, one uh, handling social ads, one handling affiliate ads, one handling search ads. And uh, uh, I have seen this particular uh, uh, requirement which keeps popping up, something called demand manager. So, you know, this is where with form of the PPC or the ad online advertisement, you can actually create the demand. So sometimes they are also called demand managers. Uh, if you're good in PPC, one of the best things to do is uh, when you move up or move horizontally is become a digital marketing manager because uh, till now, this PPC or online ad is something which uh, people still see as a very kind of uh, special skill, although it is not really rocket science if you do it for X number of years. So, one career progression can be the digital marketing manager, which is like sits on the top for any kind of medium or big companies under whom you have the SEO, the social media, the content and other things which sit. If you, uh, so a lot of analysis also goes into uh, the, the campaign manager or the PPC manager. So you can, if you have a flair for analytics, you can actually move into the analytics uh, uh, from here and you can actually suggest companies saying that, this is where you should spend money to get the best amount of result. And you can also do, as I said, the conversion rate optimizer, which hopefully in a few years time will be a uh, opportunity to look forward to. So again, I search for uh, these terms uh, in Nokri and LinkedIn. So I found some 4,600 in Nokri and some 1,100 in LinkedIn. Uh, so again, this are kind of, a, a, I'll say there are a lot of overlaps with other profiles as well, but you know, this is just to give you an idea that there is enough job for this kind of uh, roles. This is a typical salary. In fact, uh, uh, I'll probably disagree a bit on this uh, because I did a sorting from high to low. And I think uh, if you're a good, uh, you know, PPC manager or even as you can see that AdWords, AdWords is one of the uh, uh, thing that, you know, people look at as a PPC manager, you have to be like AdWords certified, you have to know what, how AdWords operates. So uh, the salaries can go much higher than this. Uh, coming to the social media before I start this, let me see if I have any questions. So Jitesh says, when we talk about paid ad on Facebook and small companies having a free Facebook page, posting ad with website link, when audience visit the website link through the ad, does, does that also count in data checking? Yes. 
it also counts in data checking. So what Jitesh is saying is, I post a Facebook ad and somebody click on the ad and come to my site. Uh, typically, you know, Facebook has got uh, seven or eight objectives. One of the objective is uh, how many website visitors can I drive? So I have data both from the Facebook side. So Facebook, you know, if you open the Facebook Insight, you will see that you know so many people have clicked on the data, right? So that is one check that you do in terms of data, and you get a profile of the people as much as possible. Uh, the second thing is you get in a website. So you have a Google Analytics, which is, or any other analytics tool, which is there in the website, which will say that uh, for, from this particular post, so every ad is like a post, from this particular post, so many people have come in. Once they have come in, what they have done. So, you know, they have gone to a product page, they have read your blog, they have stayed there for four minutes, some of them have stayed there for less than 10 seconds. All this data you will get at the website. So from Facebook, you'll get the data, and from the website, you'll get the data. Um, what is CRO? Again, uh, I'll come back to this. I have already repeated this uh, when I come to the CRO portion in terms of conversion rate optimization. ACO in brief uh, from Jahan Zeb Shah. So Jahan Zeb, here is again a very short and simple explanation of SEO. Search engine optimization is a technique which includes a lot of content work coding work, and building links from other sites to my site. So that a search engine like Google understands the importance of what is there in my site. So if I have a site which talks about different yoga sessions or different yoga techniques, and somebody searches for yoga techniques, Google can catch whatever those signals from my site and rank me in the first page of Google. First page of this, you know, the search results. So the techniques which are involved in getting my site to rank yoga instruction as a keyword is called SEO, search engine optimization. Okay, right. Now we go to social media. So social media, uh, again, the typical KRAs are the media optimization. So you, you have different media channels like uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn. Uh, so you have to create those kind of pages. You create uh, optimizing the profiles, what you write in the bio, what you write in about, what kind of pictures do you put up on the top. And uh, the curation and creation. So uh, sometimes you might be posting uh, other people's stuff, which is the curation. Sometimes you might be posting your people's stuff, which is the... Okay, you can, um, so somebody has put up the hand, so you can probably ask the questions on the chat itself. Okay, so uh, when you put up the hand, you can ask the question in the chat so that I can answer them. Fine. So <clears throat> you can, uh, I was talking about curation. I was, uh, now creation is the kind of content that you want to put up in the social media. So it is uh, something about your product, your service, about some customer testimonial, about certain thing that your employees do, or uh, certain reviews. So there are a lot of uh, uh, content that you can create, uh, basically to make the target audience understand more about your product and service, what are your values, and probably you know get them to buy next time they want a similar product or service. Community management, so you'll have you know a lot of uh, on your page, and uh, there are a lot of people who will be interacting. Then you have different groups. You have Facebook group, you have LinkedIn group. Uh, so there's community which kind of tries to engage on a particular uh, you know a problem or particular issue. So there has to be some some kind of a, a, a trust on how do we manage the queries which comes into the community and also to manage you know that this this community online community is not taken for right with some kind of a trolls or some kind of a you know uh, comments which comes in which is not really contextual and of course we come to the paid social media so if you are a social media manager and if you say that look i don't know how to run facebook ad 
believe me, I mean, that is not going to uh, go very well. So you need to understand. So if you're a social media manager, you also need to know how to run ads on social media, at least on Facebook. The, the typical uh, roles are the executive manager. You can become a team lead. Again, a social media agency. I have worked with a couple of them in Bangalore. And there is some wonderful team leads which manage, uh, you know, some eight to 10 people. You can become a community manager, which has some specific roles. Uh, uh, for instance, one of my clients who is into uh, a nonprofit and education, uh, they have a dedicated community manager which interacts with uh, uh, different stakeholders in the community, which includes the government, the bureaucrats, uh, uh, the different other education institutions across the world. Uh, so there is a, a specific role for that. In politics, you will see this uh, quite a lot. Um, online reputation manager, again, this is a very specific role, and this guy has to you know, know a lot of tools because you just cannot... Uh, it, is, it is probably not only focused on social media, because social media, you can see this, but uh, even beyond social media, there are uh, monitoring tools uh, where... Uh, you can monitor that how is your brand being sp spoken about. And if you see that there is a, some kind of a negative publicity of your brand, you try to address that. So online social media even works beyond social media. The typical opportunities, again, you know, from social media, you can jump to become a digital marketing manager. Since you work with lots of content, you can also get into content marketing from here. Okay, so... Uh, I have some questions. I am from finance background. Is it good to do digital marketing? Why not? Uh, but uh, I think this question is more in terms of what kind of uh, career that you want to get into. I mean, uh, from finance, if you come to digital marketing, uh, digital marketing is not a, not really rocket science. I didn't have, uh, uh, I learned on my own eyes. Uh, so uh, this can be learned. So uh, let me take, take that fear out. Uh, but if you're already uh, five to 10 years into finance, and if you want to switch into digital marketing, you might have to take a step back in terms of your career. But once you're into this, you can really grow well. The, the other options I'm just thinking aloud is, uh, let's see if you're in finance and if you're working as a digital marketer for a, a company which is also into finance, for instance, Tally, right? Now, if you want to become a digital marketer in Tally, you already have a, a knowledge of uh, the product. And now you just have to add on the knowledge of digital marketing and promote it, right? So in that way, you don't really have to take a step back. Uh, Prashant Mirani, what are the commercials? Commercials for what? Can you just clarify this uh, question? Pradeep, could you give me uh, more clarity on curation? Okay. Um, so in social media, it is always not possible that I create my own original stuff. For instance, let me just uh, uh, go back to my example of yoga instruction. And let's say if I'm a yoga instructor, I'm not, by the way, uh, I'm still a learner. Uh, I can probably take, uh, you know, certain blogs by Isha Yoga or by, uh, you know, somebody who has written about BK Sayangar and say that, you know, this is the way, uh, this is different variants of Surya Namaskar that you can do. So I curated those kind of contents and uh, put it on my uh, page or uh, on my social media page and say, hey, this is the 10 tips, you know, how you can make your body much more flexible, right? Now, for social media, it is very important to understand is for your audience, you have to give your own contents, that's true. But you have to also give the best possible content that they can learn from. And the best possible content on a particular subtopic may not be with you. It may be with somebody else. So that's what that's the reason why we share, right? We share something on social media. The similar thing, the curation is basically finding the best possible content on a subtopic which the audience might be interested in and share it on your page. Um, is this session recorded? If, the, if it recorded, where will I find it? Uh, these are the things uh, you can get, uh, Priyanka can get back to you. How long the seminar is going on? Uh, oh, we are in 12.15. Great. So uh, we'll be soon wrapping this up uh, quickly. 
uh, we'll try to wrap it up in another 15 20 minutes is this all manually done or automation tools are available uh, a lot of automation tools are available uh, in fact some of them are also kind of cheap to free and some of them are uh, very costly at the enterprise level i'll come back to the cro uh, i'm facing difficulty to continue as i'm in the office i hope uh, i think that there's recorded session available during the course is curation like content marketing or creative writing okay e is next to w fine um is curation is also part of content marketing um i am unable to understand what do you mean by creative writing uh so anything that you write for instance if you're writing something like a blog and um, you might want to write a curated blog which might say that these are the 10 experts who talk something about the best practices in SEO. So basically, you're curating the opinions of 10 experts into one blog. That is actually your original content, but there's a lot of curation which also happens. I'm in retail sales and marketing in mid managerial level with 10 years of experience. Will retail marketing course really help? Yes, yes. I mean, uh, at some point of time, you will be. Uh, uh, going to a level uh you'll be promoted to a level where you'll be kind of the top management of marketing if i might put it in that way and uh, you need to know how uh, a digital marketing and digital cell works so yes definitely uh can we have a live example of curation and creation so tazim uh, let's do one thing let me put this particular question uh, for a particular uh, subsequent topics because we are still uh, in the middle of this uh, uh, this particular webinar so uh, we will just skip it and uh, keep you informed uh, when we talk about uh, something on content marketing creative only and creative content okay I'm a BBM student uh, uh, just now finished my degree will this course help in building my career oh yes definitely I'll come to that again at the end of it. Uh, so the social media manager, uh, again, um, as we see in uh, Nokri and LinkedIn, the opportunities are pretty, pretty, pretty good in terms of the numbers. And the salaries are also very, very decent. Uh, uh, recently, I uh, was also helping one of my clients to uh, recruit somebody in social media and uh, uh, believe me, I mean, the kind of uh, uh, CVs that I got uh, because they have had a very low budget. I saw, you know, the salaries are, have really shot up in the last three years. And then you come to the top echelon in terms of the uh, digital marketing manager. So he need to, this is the breadth part of it, where uh, he needs to manage all, all kind of media, online media. There are a lot of team management which is involved. Uh, you have to also do a lot of vendor management because you are working with different agency, be a creative agency or an ad agency. Uh, so negotiate uh, the timelines and rates and deliverables. Uh, you also have to create the marketing plan and uh, your CEO will be looking at you uh, for the return on investment that they do in marketing. So the roles manage. Uh, so typically, you know, uh, this data marketing manager can be named as a manager, it can be a team lead, it can be the CMO, chief marketing officer. In very, very small startup, this is just one guy. So uh, this guy has to get hand dirty in everything. But of course, he, is, he will have some external agency and freelancer to help him with, help him or her with. Uh, opportunities, you can go into the, the product, being a product manager. If you are good in data marketing, then you can also become a product manager for that particular category or set of products you can become the cmo and you can start on your own as an entrepreneur uh, so there is enough opportunities as we can see in nokri and linkedin nokri has some sixteen thousand, and uh, linkedin has got some eight thousand. Uh, the salaries are pretty good so the way i see it in accenture it, it is giving a salary of 24 to 27 lakhs uh, so in bigger companies, you will get a very good salary if you have good years of experience and you understand the breadth and you can do a lot of management of vendors and people and do a lot of strategy and planning and operations. 
so uh, now I come to something which is the ad ops, so which is a kind of evolving role. So what you do is, uh, as I was mentioning that for a bigger company like a Google or Yahoo or even for some brands like Tesco and other things, you manage the operations of the advertisements through uh, search, through social, through affiliate, through programmatic. So there are different things that you can do. So you manage the campaigns. There's a team under you. And uh, if you're an executive, of course, you're working in a team. But if you're a team leader, you actually have a team under you. You need to know a lot of tools to manage all these things. So uh, the tool, the knowledge of tools is very essential. And you have to interact a lot with the client. So there are certain uh, service level agreements. Uh, there are certain conditions that you need to fulfill. And so it involves a lot of talking with the clients. The roles are manager, team leads, and key account managers. So key account manager is basically you manage certain big, big account for the particular agency or the company. Uh, you can become a CMO after this uh, or an agency head. I have seen some of the, this ad ops guys actually have started on their own, uh, especially on the ad ops uh, technology front, building products for that. Um, not many jobs as of now, as I can see in Nokri and uh, uh, LinkedIn, but it is growing. Uh, uh, one reason that the that these jobs are not really published is because uh, sometimes there's mass recruitment which also happens uh, so the numbers are probably underquoted if i search in nokri or linkedin um, and the salaries are pretty decent i mean this is just a snapshot so you have uh, if you can see the the names uh, which are there you have Epsilon, you have Kaspersky, we have Wayfair, a lot of uh, uh, big companies who are actually uh, employing. Of course, you have the biggies like the Accentures and uh, the Cognizance and Mindtree also. Um, there's some something which is still evolving. This is the content marketing. You can see that if there's only 1,731 jobs which I can find in Nokri. Uh, uh, some of the brands do realize, uh, you know, uh, the importance of this and slow, slowly, slowly this is building up. Some people can just confuse content marketing with uh, a copywriting or a blogger or something like that. So typically a content marketing, again, I talk about curation and production. So uh, you curate certain contents, you curate, you know, other ideas, you curate other blogs and uh, you can repurpose them and use it giving the due credit <coughs> you produce different contents it can be a blog it can be a video it can be a white paper uh, which you give it to your target audience yes repurposing so uh, you might write a very uh, good blog and you see that uh, there is a lot of interaction which has happened on the blog and you might want to uh, repurpose the blog into a video and run it on a YouTube channel. You can repurpose into uh, infographics and make it more shareable. Uh, so people who are from marketing background uh, probably have heard something that, you know, something called consumer journey. So from the awareness to the action, uh, there is a linear, uh, in, in, in today's world, there's actually nothing which is linear, but there are different contents which are mapped to the different points of the consumer journey. And content marketing's uh, marketer's job is to map those. Uh, and of course, he has to manage the both internal as well as the external team. Um, as we discussed before, that content marketing and inbound marketing is kind of goes hand in hand. So there are contents which are created for which uh, there are inbound techniques with which we get the target audience and engage them on our social platform or on our website now let's look at something which is yet to evolve uh, something like conversion rate optimization and again i'll just uh, repeat what conversion rate optimization means i'll repeat again uh, probably with one more example so so let's say you know um, i'm running a promotion for this particular webinar right and uh, my team has already run a promotion and it has reached out to let's say uh, 50000 people now as i see that uh, only 450 people have actually registered for this webinar now the job of and out of 450 around 100 people are actually attending this webinar now my job as a conversion rate optimizer is 
how do I increase these numbers? So, for instance, my team might say that, look, Tohen, next time, if you do on a particular topic, which is conversion rate optimization, just for an example, there may be more people who may be coming for it. If you can give some offers, I can get more people who are going to attend this webinar. So all this job is actually done by a conversion rate optimizer. As you see that, you know, when I searched this in the India LinkedIn page, no matching job was found. When I did in US, there are 11 results. So it is still, <clears throat> it is recognized very well in US and other Western countries, but in India, we are still to have a bit of uh, problem. Typically, you know, this guy, you know, works on the contents, this guy works on the ads, there are different tools, which this guy can use for making more conversion. And very, very important, this guy has to devise certain experiments, certain hypothesis saying that, you know, this set of criteria can give me X amount of leads. If it doesn't, then they change certain criteria. So uh, this is, this will be going forward a very big deal in online marketing. And uh, whether you are a social media marketer or a PPC guy, you should have a very good knowledge and probably, you know, in future you can specialize in this. <clears throat> and of course, that is what you are taken for the ROI. So uh, basically this is your CFO or your CEO will say that, hey, I, I will invest 10 lakhs, but you need to give me that result that I want. So many sales, so many leads, right? In the boundary line, there is one more role called web analytics expert. So although this is on digital marketing, but typically if you see this web analytics expert is actually from an analytics company. So there are a lot of data analytics company. And uh, uh, when you know I look for an expert, I ideally like to look not from a data marketing agency, but from an analytics uh, agency because they are more adept with different modelings and different techniques and different uh, methods that they use. So typically, you know, uh, this guy has an understanding of the key analytics tool. He not only understands the data, but he can also make the data usable. For instance, if I if I tell you that, you know, uh, for a particular blog, uh, there has been 100 people who have out of the 100 people, there's been 20 people who have come from, let's say, Bangalore, who have spent more than uh, five minutes on my page. Now, this is a data. Now, how do we make this data actionable? So maybe I'm writing something which is very specific for people in Bangalore, right? And uh, then I can create similar kind of contents for the other geographies like Delhi or uh, you know Hyderabad or Calcutta or Mumbai, right? Um, he also supports in 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 lot of cases, you know, there are the internal web analytics person uh, who supports the campaign team. Sometimes they are also being uh, uh, kind of uh, outsourced to other analytics uh, agencies. But anyway, I wanted to, you know, keep it as part of my presentation that analytics is something which is very, very important across all the functions. And you might even get a job as an analytics in the digital marketing team agency. Uh, this is a snapshot that I've taken from Payscale day before yesterday, and this is just uh, uh, you know a sample of 1,579 uh, professionals in digital marketing, ranging from a salary of 1.9 lakhs to 12 lakhs, uh, giving a median of 4.55 lakhs as a salary. Now, uh, this is again just an indication because it can go up and down in any possible way, right? I had, uh, you know, uh, an off, I mean, not an offer, but I have seen this, you know, the salaries can go as high as even 80 lakhs for a senior CMO level digital marketer. Um, so let's look at the knowledge. Um, so we talked about the different horizontal in terms of service, social and content and the sub horizontal as well. Again, something very, very important across all this that you should be knowing your audience. You should know how to communicate with the audience, what kind of content that you are going to use, and you should understand the use of data. And this is something you should always, always do if you want to really progress in digital marketing. And this is actually super, super simple, easy. 
you have to continuously keep learning. So whether you know you follow certain blogs or YouTube channel, I you know listen to a lot of podcast uh, while I drive, while I uh, go for my morning walk or I do my exercise. Uh, so there's a lot of learning because the, you know the reason that I say this is this: all these platforms, especially the Google and Facebook, there's a lot of algorithm changes which is happening. You know Google AdWords. I was talking about AdWords. But from 26 now, the Google AdWords has become Google Ads. I'm not saying that lot, lot many things have changed. This is make, becoming more intuitive and easier for somebody who is starting off on AdWords. Uh, may not be as good for me, uh, who has been there in this particular field for a very long time. Similarly, you have in Facebook, uh, you know, the latest update in Facebook is actually you can see your competitor's ad if you like his page. So there are a lot of things which, which keep evolving in this digital marketing because they are also trying to make it more easier and simpler, both to the advertiser as well as to the user. So unless you keep learning continuously, chances are very less that you know, you'll have a stellar, stellar growth because somebody will always beat you. Um, with this, I come to the end of this session and I open this up for Q&A. Uh, can you share Priyanka's details so that I can contact for the recording sessions? Can you share the slide of the content marketing management? Yes, Sujata, we can do that. I think uh, what I'll do is I'll open up the slide where Priyanka's details are there and you can get in touch with her for all this logistics. Again, her number is 704406 Okay, let's see what else. Okay, so now we can shoot. Uh, I mean, let's focus only on this particular topic because I know there are other topics which might come in terms of how do I curate content, how do I do better content, uh, you know, conversion rate optimization. So uh, we will probably take it up in other slide. In fact, uh, one of the things that uh, I probably will want to get a suggestion from all of you is uh, do suggest what uh, topic that you may be interested in uh, so that I can plan. So one of the things that I thought was uh, since we talked about the careers in digital marketing, next webinar we can talk about certain skill set that you require under some of the horizontals and verticals. So this is, uh, you can uh, send a mail to priyanka.shortcard at manipalglobal.com. If you want some more suggestions, uh, you can write to me at tuhin underscore ghosh at outlook.com. And I can be connected uh, in LinkedIn in Ghosh Tohin and in Twitter in Tohin Tweets. Uh, so I open this floor for uh, this webinar for some questions and answers. Okay, so here is uh, some offer for you. Uh, so one of the question is about this particular course. So this is a course uh, which we have created with uh, Manipal uh, Academy of Higher Education, which recently got the Institute of Eminence. Uh, this is a PG certificate program in digital marketing. Uh, we just did a soft launch of this and uh, there is, uh, you can follow this uh, bit.ly link, bit.ly slash pgdm2907, that is today's date, pgdm2907. Uh, since the link was too large for me to put it on a PPT and for you to remember that and write. Uh, so this is a link partner that we use. So you can get 10% off and which is valid till 31st of July 2018. For more on this, again, you can uh, get in touch with Priyanka. Uh, so, so how is this course? So somebody has said, let me see. How is this PG course is different from other university, other institutions? So this is a course which I had created uh, with Manipal. So of course, I don't know whether I should be, uh, uh, you know, beating my own drums. This course, even before creation, has gone through some six months of iteration in terms of the topics that we have chosen. So I think it's very contextual to the concept of T-shirt marketing. So we not only covered that breadth. And when I say breadth, uh, we just haven't just covered SEO and social media and uh, PPC and content marketing. 
but we also went into the nuances of the skill set. How do you manage your operations with agencies? And um, so there are a lot of things which also, uh, other than the subject matter skills that you will require in terms of budgeting, in terms of planning, uh, those are the things which we have uh, you know, integrated with the course. Uh, we have also included something called a uh, simulation. So if you want to run uh, AdWords, uh, you can always, uh, uh, or Google Ads as they're being called from the day before yesterday. Uh, you can always create a login and spend some money and uh, try running some ads. But we have created a simulation, which is by Authors, one of our partners. Uh, where we try to give a scenario where you can actually create a plan for running a search ad campaign. So those are some of the very uh, valuable uh, things that we have integrated uh, with our course. So I can assure you that uh, <clears throat> this is a course that will equip you with anything and everything of digital marketing except coding. We don't teach coding in this course. For that, you have to look for other courses. So Sarvesh, uh, uh, again, the same questions. Will uh, What will be the mode of teaching? Um, yes, the mode of teaching will be online, uh, instructor-led live sessions. So we have picked up uh, different experts in different areas, and they will be you know, taking the sessions. Um, how is it different from Micah Online? Um, I don't know, I sh should I be answering this question? But as I said, uh, this has, the topics has been uh, made after a lot of research. So yeah, I mean, how can I say it? It's not good. Sujata says, is coding really necessary? No, look at me. I hardly know coding, so don't worry. Uh, Jahan Zev Shah, I think uh, you probably have to discuss this with Priyanka. So what about the study material? Okay, the study materials are provided on our learning management system. So there are presentations, there are reading materials, there are instruction guides, there are case studies. Uh, so there are summary cards. So all these things are there on the online learning management system for you to access anytime and from any device. So uh, the certificates uh, is a certificate which is provided by Manipal Academy of Higher Education, MAHE, as we call it, which is again, as I said, one of the three institutions, private institutions, which has been granted the Institute of Eminence. So you'll get the certificate of data and marketing, postgraduate certificate in data and marketing. Okay, AI simulation is, uh, as I said, this is the same simulation I'm talking about, Authors. So which essentially what it means is, let's say uh, thousands of you go through this particular simulation. Uh, now with artificial intelligence, it will try to, I don't know if you have heard about uh, uh, IBM Watson. So what it does is with every time you know people play with that particular system, it gets better, right? So there is no standard better answer or best answer for this particular system. And what happens is as the tool evolves, you have to really compete among your peers to give the best possible plan. And there is a grading which happens instantaneously. Arun says, for being an independent consultant, do we know a good amount of knowledge on coding again the same answer no i mean unless you're a website developer or if you are just doing the seo part of uh, online marketing you don't really require to know you should know that you know there's something called html and css but uh, nothing more than that a bit of reading here and there we just can help you don't need to really type in and code so uh why Mahe? Of course, this has been sponsored by Mahe, so that's why uh, uh, it's Mahe. Um, do we get Google AdWord certificates or any certificate at the end of the course other than Manipal? Uh, in this course, we will equip you 
to take up Google AdWords certification along with three of the HubSpot certification and Google Analytics IP certification. So total there are 10 certification, but this is a certification that you have to go on your own and take it. But uh, with this course material will be good enough for you to pass this certification. Priya says, how much can we grow in this field? I really don't have an answer, but I think the sky is the limit. I mean, the way online marketing is evolving, as I pointed out, uh, a role like a conversion rate optimizer. Or even, you know, uh, I don't know if you have read this uh, article uh, by there's some, somebody who is called the chief experience officer, which has been now rolled out in companies like Titan, who has its kind of uh, in the top C level kind of a role um, where a good amount of knowledge and expertise is required on digital marketing. Okay, so. All these questions about the course and why should I go with Manipal about the price and all these things. I think Priyanka, I mean, although I can, I did address a few of it, but Priyanka can address it even better. So do reach out to her over phone or just drop in a mail to her and she can answer all these questions. When we talk about, so Jitesh says, when you talk about various models like analytics, CRO, automation tools as entrepreneur, as an entrepreneur, does it become necessary to have these tools? Yes, it is necessary to have these tools, but uh, it depends on what kind of tools uh, do you require. There are a lot of free to cheap tools uh, that you can use. For instance, analytics, uh, Google Analytics, the free version, is good enough for any kind of small to medium business. So you don't need to spend on uh, uh, the premium version of Google Analytics, which is like $100,000 a year. No, you don't need to. So uh, time is 1.12.45. Uh, I'll take another five more minutes if you have specific questions uh, uh, to ask regarding this particular topic or if you want to suggest uh, some other topics for the future webinar. Is MBA important for this? No, MBA is not important for this. Um, course duration is six months. Yeah, so if you can see my screen, it says six months online program. Also, I forgot to mention this, there's a mentoring session by industry experts, which is one-on-one -on -one mentoring sessions, uh, which will also take place uh, as a part of this course. Details of this, again, with uh, Priyanka. Job placements, again, this is something which uh, Priyanka should be able to answer you. So Google Analytics tools helps with the support so Jitesh asks, so Google Analytics tool help with supports what all stuff. So Jitesh, uh, to put it very simply, if you are an entrepreneur and if you are running a small to a mid-sized kind of a company, if you have a website, uh, then the data that you get on Google Analytics, you have to just do a bit of configuration and set it up in your website, is good enough to understand that how your visitors are behaving with the different areas of your website, uh, which will help you to make your communication and if you're an e-commerce site, make your products even better. So that should be, uh, believe me, that is good enough. This free tool is more than good enough for you. Abhishek Kumar says, thank you. Thanks Abhishek for joining. Thanks Jitesh. So reach out to me, anything if you want to know about digital marketing and for this course, you reach out to Priyanka. And uh, great, thanks. Uh, I know this is Sunday and uh, I think all of you have got your own personal plans. Thanks for being part of it. And uh, see you soon uh, next time with a new topic you can always suggest. Hey, thanks for watching. Do like the video, share it and also don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more such videos. Check out exclusive coupon codes for our YouTube learners in the description and visit 
manipalprolearn.com to redeem it.